Great. So Nelia and Sophia, thanks for joining me today to discuss the role of the software engineering test here at GitLab. Um, it would be great to start with an introduction. Uh, Nelia, do you mind just uh, for the purpose of the recording, outlining your job title when you joined GitLab and, and where you're based in the world? Sure, sure. Uh, hi, I'm Nela. I'm software engineer in test uh, in enablement distribution group at GitLab. Uh, I'm based in Kazan, Russia. Uh, I've been at GitLab with over a year now. So yeah, that's it. Nice, great. And Sophia, the, the same question to you. Hi, I am Sophia. I am currently based in Vilnius, Lithuania, and I am working for the monitor stage and the monitor group. Great, great. But the software engineering test as well. Perfect. Thanks so much. So Nalia, um, you're in the distribution group within the enablement stage. What's that group mm -hmm. working on? Yeah, sure. Uh, the distribution group uh, goal is to make it as easy as possible to deploy, scale, upgrade, and fine-tune the GitLab instance, whether it's on-prem on or on cloud platform. Uh, so distribution ensures that experience uh, and of uh, installing and ma maintaining the GitLab is very easy and safe. Uh, for example, for this year, the team, uh, the main team direction is to automate uh, the deployment of large scale architectures that include availability and geo and enhance overall install, upgrade and next steps uh, experience. Yeah. Nice. Cool, cool. Sounds like some, some really interesting challenges. And Sophia, the, the, the same question to you. You're, you're in the health group within the monitor stage. What is that group working on? Sure. Um, so the, the monitor stage is currently working on providing the robust monitoring solution uh, for the GitLab users so that you have insights on your performance and availability when you're deploying with GitLab and also able to um, find out and be alerted when problems arise. And right now, I'd say that uh, we're spending a lot of time in incident management. Uh, this is just to also make GitLab not only a place where you manage and respond to the alerts, but also you can uh, find a way to remediate them. Um, this is just also a way to, um, instead of using several alerting tools and several incident management tools, have everything just in GitLab. Amazing, cool, cool. So Nelly, you, you, you've been with us since what, August uh, last year. Um, mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the most challenging project you've been working on in that time? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think the most challenging uh, project for me would be the project that I'm mainly working on, that is GPT or GitLab performance tool and everything that's related to GitLab performance testing. Um, the tool has been built by GitLab quality team uh, to provide performance testing of any GitLab instance and it's based on K6 under the hood. Uh, GPT was used to help build and validate recommended uh, GitLab reference architectures. So one of the interesting challenges of working on this tool is that it can be used by anyone uh, who is setting a GitLab environment at scale or just want to test the, their existing GitLab environment performance. Uh, so when we are developing a new test or adding a new feature, we need to be, we need to keep it in mind and need to be extra cautious <laughs> uh, with, for example, da test data set up or unsafe tests that are deleting or adding data. Uh, it was a new mi mindset for me because uh, previously when I developed tests, they were all internal and only used by quality or engineering team. Uh, so uh, and, and the GPT, on the contrary, is not just a testing tool, but kind of a product as well. So that is very, very exciting and challenging as well. Yeah. Oh, sounds like a really cool uh, project and, and product to be working on. And mm -hmm. Sophia, you've been with GitLab since January of this year, so January 2020. Um, yeah, yeah. I hope you've been able to grow in that time. Are you able to give me a couple of examples of, of where you've been able to grow professionally or personally in, in that time? Sure. Um, and I, I had the chance to actually learn a lot within this period uh, and also had the chance to collaborate with, uh, with colleagues that were not just from my uh, monitor stage as well as with the configure stage. So 
I had to learn, for example, a lot about Kubernetes management because uh, when you're monitoring an app and we are testing about um, how to monitor an application within GitLab, um, we are using the process of auto DevOps. And I had to actually really uh, dive into this, uh, a lot of Kubernetes management and how to actually make this an efficient process for us to deploy applications. But this means that I had to explore a solution such as uh, K3S uh, working uh, with Docker and Kubernetes. This was, um, so we, we switched actually from using Google Kubernetes engine in our tests to use actually K3S, which is, which made tests actually far more uh, effective and lighter. And also by being with the monitor team, I had a lot of chances to work with Prometheus. So Prometheus is a tool that um, enables um, a lot of things. And one of them is, for example, alerting. And you, you get to actually um, understand the technology that is behind building the monitor uh, features. Um, it has been a lot of learning so far. Nice, nice. Sounds super cool. Nelia, if we were to go back to that time before you started with GitLab, um, what's the one piece of advice that you, you would give yourself? Uh, yeah, um, I would say uh, to be more confident and not to worry about anything. Uh, I was pretty nervous <laughs> before my start date uh, because uh, I, I thought that I'm lacking some knowledge uh, in areas and uh, it would be drag me down. But uh, everyone at GitLab are very, very supportive and the team is very, very knowledgeable and there is a lot of challenging uh, interesting work ahead and you can learn a ton here. Uh, so uh, I've learned a lot uh, for the last year and I'm looking forward to what happens next. Uh, and the application for ECT at GitLab is very, very unique because everything is publicly available. You can uh, learn almost everything about the quality team uh, in our handbook, uh, about our tests uh, in GitLab QA or GPT or other projects. So I would advise everyone to learn more about us in our documentation and to get the sense of how would you feel uh, working with us. Yeah, uh, that's it. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, it's a good nod to the handbook. For any candidates that are watching this, there is a lot of information there. We appreciate it can be a little bit overwhelming though, so don't get too bogged down in it. But um, if you're looking for something, the, the chances are that it will be in there. And Sophia, if, if we're thinking about that time before you joined us, maybe December of last year, um, and you could go back to them. What advice would you give Sophia of December 2019? Um, first of all, I completely agree and identify with Nelia. Uh, for me, somehow the imposter syndrome is very real. And um, I think there was a lot of support and clear actionable steps the moment, very first moment I joined and started working. And there was even in our uh, annual virtual contribute event, we had actually um, a workshop about uh, imposter syndrome and seeing so many people participating that within, the, within GitLab just made me understand how amazing the team is and actually how everyone does feel the same and feels very overwhelmed in the beginning, no matter the experience. And I think another important point is also to that everyone was selling in the beginning was to really soak in the GitLab values because GitLab is also a very special place for um, that lives really and truly the values it stands for. So I also would, would suggest to take a look and really read them very well. And um, yeah, it has been anyways, a lot of support throughout the way. Thanks. Thank you both. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your stories and share your learnings. And I hope it can be useful for, for anyone that's watching this. Um, we can end the call there, but um, yeah, I really appreciate your time and have a good rest of the day wherever you both are in the world.